Evening all. How are you? Cheers. Nice cup of coffee. I'm about to light up this lovely little Eskimo that I made a while back. Stem not made by me. Stem by Mike Billington of Blake Mar Briars. Really nice bit of briar. Lovely bit of grain. Just look at that grain. That looks like uh, almost um, like maple. Um, just out here starting another pipe. Can you tell what it is yet? Hopefully this will end up being a very nice pipe. Something new for me. If you have any ideas of what it's going to look like, do leave me a comment down below. Just going to light this up. Mm. I forgot to tell you what's in it. I haven't smoked this for a while. Um, in it, here's my latest tamper, a broken stem. In it, I have some Asquith mixture, which is a vapor. So, As the title suggests, I just saw a post on Facebook from Sam Bramer of GQ Tobaccos, of a post which he saw in another group, which says, Scandinavian Tobacco Group acquires premium pipe tobacco brands. And essentially, the long and short of it is, is that they've bought the license for Dunhill Tobacco. I'll read you some of the article. Scandinavian Tobacco Group AS has closed the deal to acquire certain pipe tobacco trademarks and designs from Dunhill Tobacco Company of London Limited, a subsidiary of British American Tobacco PLC. Included in the deal are premium pipe tobacco trademarks such as early morning pipe, nightcap, royal yacht and Elizabethan mixture, so stuff and things will be happy, that were previously sold under the Dunhill brand and carry a solid reputation as well as premium positioning. The price paid is confidential, but immaterial. Scandinavian Tobacco Group will market the acquired trademarks as sub-brands to existing brands in the company's portfolio. The acquisition strengthens Scandinavian Group's product range in the premium pipe tobacco segment in important pipe tobacco markets such as the US, Germany and across Asia, and uh, so on and so forth. Um, I think what that is saying... is that it won't be Dunhill Tobacco anymore. But they will call the blends those names, such as Nightcap. Um, I'm, I'm just basing on what I've just read. Um, I don't know that for a fact. But it seems logical that that's what they're saying, because Dunhill, the main reason why they got out of the business is because they didn't want, to be they didn't want the brand Dunhill to be associated with tobacco. That being the case, it's unlikely that they will be known as Dunhill Tobacco. But you never know. Chances are it'll be one of the main premium brands from the Scandinavian Tobacco Group and they will just have a range which has these names in it. I've got mixed feelings about it to be honest. On the one hand, great. Uh, a, a British brand is kind of being saved. we yet to see if the actual blends will be the same, precisely the same blends. Whether it will be produced by... Well, actually they produced it, didn't they, beforehand? There's a whole chain of companies and sub-companies. I think it was Orlick under the Scandinavian group and God knows what else. Uh, British American Tobacco. Or other. Anyway. As I say, I've got mixed feelings. So for number one, I don't know what the, the actual tobacco is going to be like, whether it will be the same or not. And um, also, in some ways, you know, we've all kind of stocked up. People who wanted to get downhill tobacco went out and got their stuff. 
you know, probably bought more than they would have done normally, at least quicker than they would have done normally. Um, and in some ways, you know, you look at a particular traditional company and you kind of take, for example, McClelland. Would we want McClellan Tobacco to be taken over by another company and perhaps not produced to the same quality? I don't know. Some people may, maybe yes, some people not. Um, that was the reason why McClellan didn't sell out because they couldn't do the product anymore. And they certainly didn't want to sell it to somebody else who wouldn't do the product and bring the name down. Um, but having said that, Dunhill's been through lots of iterations and lo and different uh, um, guises till now. So another one, why not? You know, keep the name alive. My only real reservation um, is I feel sorry for Sheraton and for uh, Wellau in Germany. I feel sorry for the companies that have made an effort to to try and fill the gap left by Dunhill ducking out of the business um, and announcing that they were closing shop. So people have invested a fortune. I mean, Sheraton have invested a fortune in in making their own blends uh, to match. Um, they've invested money in the artwork and the tins and the tin uh, stickers, the labelling which they've done with you know really nice, high quality embossed labels. Now all that costs money. And yes, there's room for lots of companies to operate, but a company like Charlton and Wellar, they've done it and made that investment on the back of those blends disappearing. And if they don't disappear and their, their sort of market share, I think, will suffer as a result. Because if somebody's faced with a choice, if somebody only has, say, $15 and he needs to decide, am I going to buy the Sheraton Dunhill Navy Rolls or am I going to buy the Dunhill Dunhill Navy Rolls? You know, most people will go for the Dunhill. So I do feel sorry for Sheraton. It would be nice. It would have been nice if Dunhill would have been away maybe for a bit longer. Give Sheraton a chance to get a foothold in the trade. And look, I'm not crying for Sheraton. They've got their foot in other markets as well. They're they're big in cigars. The the uh, company that uh, owns Sheraton now that 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 has released the blends. Um, is it Scott Vine? I think he is the owner, and you see him all over social media with uh, at cigar parties and stuff like that. I'm not crying for him, but good luck to him. But nevertheless, it doesn't matter if he's a a pauper or a billionaire. It's irrelevant. The fact is, they invested money on the back of Dunhill going away. And uh, whilst I'm really happy that Dunhill will not disappear, I still feel sorry for Sheraton. This Asquith doesn't want to stay alight. Well, this pipe. That picture in the background there will be a bit of a clue. This is a shape I've always adored from uh, Lars Everson. I won't be able to get anywhere near it, but I'm going to try and do my version of it. Catch you guys on the next one.